Hello, this is Dr. Michael Smith of Integrative Health Solutions, and today we are going to take a deep dive into autoimmunity. Autoimmunity describes a class of chronic diseases that are caused by a derangement of your immune system, causing it to attack your connective tissue, your organs, your glands, and even possibly your skin. It could be said that all disease, but especially all autoimmune disease, are caused by a combination of a systemic overstrain, nutritional deficiencies, poor genetics, chronic congestion, and inflammation. These factors aren't really meant to be in any kind of order. They're just the most fundamental kind of constant wear and tears on human health. So a systemic overstrain occurs when your adaptive health, especially your stress hormones, reproductive hormones, neurotransmitters, and all of the enzymes that keep everything working, begin to lose their ability to keep your metabolism in balance. When you look at nutritional deficiencies, they tend to cause an inability for our body to repair basically every tissue or every other aspect of your health, your metabolism, your blood, your organs, and about 70 trillions of your cells. Even in the modern world with our nutritionally fortified foods, many people are still having declining health just because of a lack of nutrient-dense food or, honestly, poorly made supplements. When you look at your genetic inheritance, it's obviously what you've received from all of the generations before you. Some of us have won the genetic lottery, and some of us maybe feel more like the canary of the mineshaft of the modern world. Some of us will trigger or turn on every gene for every illness that we carry. Others may actually carry the genes for many illnesses and never get sick in their entire life. So it's not just a one-to-one -one thing. When you look at chronic tissue congestion and chronic inflammation, so just imagine a bruise or a swollen joint uh, or any other deeper aspect of what's happening in your body around any kind of wound or healing. It's always going to come with some aspect of swelling or congestion, and that can often uh, create the conditions for more chronic inflammation. And that process will also create the conditions for more sluggish tissue repair, a more systemic kind of toxicity because of all of the tissue waste and an overall breakdown of normal immunity and detoxification. So hopefully that makes some common sense because I'm trying to bring up kind of a theme uh, in human health. You know, if I had a shelf, you could only stack so many problems on top of that shelf before that shelf would give away and basically break down. So in this video, I'm going to use the image of some stacked boards for your shelves uh, or to represent basically how adaptable or resistant your body is to any kind of disease. And we're going to put on top of that, those stacked boards, some little symbols uh, that are going to talk about the different kind of loads or stressors that most of us have, you know, added on to our, our life and our health these days. And as you can imagine, inevitably, all of those loads are going to break through all of those shelves. And that's going to give us, hopefully, a, a kind of intuitive common sense relationship with, you know, where your body is the strongest, hopefully, what's going to wear your body down, you know, more or less uh, eventually, and how to appreciate, um, you know, that relationship. Because once you can start solving those relationships in your health, getting your health back becomes actually really, really quite easy. So let's look a little more deeply into how the systemic overload happens. Your health naturally rests on something as simple as your adaptability, your circulation, and your genetic inheritance. The most erosive loads for people in the modern world are stress, toxins, chronic infections, chronic inflammation, junk food, and trauma. So if we look in more detail, you know, your adaptability is essentially made up of every single part of your body that's helping out every other single part of your body work together and maintain what's called homeostasis or a good functioning balance. Your adaptability is also made up of you, which is your patience, your character, what you may call your mojo, or that feeling you get when a big decision comes up that really matters. When you look at your circulation, that includes everything that moves from A to B in your body, including things like your blood cells, obviously oxygen, every essential nutrient has to get from one place to another, every hormone, every neurotransmitter, they all need a ride, and even the electrical conduction that happens very subtly within your nervous system, that's also technically a kind of circulation. You may not have heard this, but in Chinese medicine, in our understanding, circulation is health, because circulation covers everything. So your genetic inheritance determines how long you can resist all of the insults of the modern world, or it determines which kinds of chronic illnesses will be expressed if you stay at the party a bit too long. 
So that is your foundation for general health. Got to have good genes, got to have good circulation, and you have to be adaptable. So let's look at those more erosive loads. So stress actually changes the way the your immune system can work. It can actually gradually shrink the actual size of your brain, and it uses up your vitality, obviously just stressing instead of living. Toxins, you know, another obvious stressor, they actually cause what is called free radical activity and damage, and that can spread anywhere else throughout your body, breaking down your membranes, breaking down your genes, damaging your nerves, and uh, basically just causing havoc throughout your body. Chronic infections can both weaken your immune system and potentially make it even more aggressive in other ways. Infections can also use up your vitality and your nutrition, just fighting battles that could be easily solved with proper treatment. Candida is probably the most recognized systemic infection in the world, and you know it's actually normal for most people to have a bit of that problem. When you look at chronic inflammation, it is one of the greatest burdens on your health in the modern world. Our modern lifestyle, our diet, our overconsumption of stimulants and intoxicants leave most of us overinflamed and undernourished. Junk food, no surprise, that's an immense problem for your immune system and your vitality. These franken foods, all the extra sugar laden snacks, anything that's deep fried over and over again, all of these things cannot in any way improve your health. And at a certain point, these foods will progress any and every illness, that process that's actually happening in your body, and or it'll just make you age really badly. So trauma, it comes in many shapes and sizes. There's a lot of forms of trauma from childhood abuse, uh, industrial accidents, car accidents, and even what people call generational trauma. All of these things have been scientifically linked to significant changes in the way your immune system can work and other factors downstream that can Im impact your health in pretty serious ways. So at a certain point, obviously, all of the loads that you have stacked up will become too much for your body's adaptability or your resistance. And of course, there's going to be that breakthrough, breakthrough threshold, or what we call a systemic overstrain. And that's step one for almost all illness, but especially for autoimmune disease. So one of the biggest factors in autoimmunity is called a permeable bowel membrane or a leaky gut. So 75% of your immune system actually surrounds your gut, keeping the contents of your gut from infecting the rest of your body. A leaky gut happens when the cellular connections in your gut membrane actually break down and things like bacteria, undigested proteins can get into your bloodstream, making your immune system more and more aggressive. So the adaptability of your gut is made up of your mucous membrane, your microbiome, and your adaptive immunity. They can all be insulted or damaged by chronic inflammation, antibiotics, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, dysbiosis, and simply malnutrition. So let's look into that more deeply. Your mucous membrane is actually one cell thick and is, creates a barrier between the contents of what's inside your gut and your bloodstream, while at the same time that membrane absorbs 98% of all the nutrients you actually get out of your food. If you were to actually stretch that membrane out, it would actually be the size of an international tennis court. And your body actually has to rebuild that two, 3,000 square foot membrane every four or five days. Your microbiome is a massive community of bacteria and other microorganisms that produce most of your neurotransmitters, help you digest certain challenging foods, create essential nutrients that you can't not make for your uh, self in any other way, and essentially guide your immune system. When you think of your adaptive immunity, it's kind of like the front line of your immune system in a very, very unique way. And it's always adapting or learning every day about what's new in the world and what kind of problems it has to solve. If this part of your immune system is in a reactive and aggressive mood, you're going to be more likely to produce things or develop things like food intolerances and other kinds of allergies. And if you're already chronically ill, your adaptive immunity is basically deciding how most of your days are going to go, good or not so good. So your health, but especially the aggressiveness of your immune system, is determined by your mucous membrane, your microbiome, and that front line of your immune system. So let's look into the hardest loads that your gut actually has to bear. When you look at chronic inflammation, that can physically actually just destroy the mucous membrane, causing things like ulcers. I think we are all pretty familiar with that. 
Chronic inflammation tells your immune system that basically the sky is falling and it keeps using up your neurotransmitters as anti-inflammatories, leaving you basically burnt out or feeling even worse than that. Antibiotics literally kill wide ranges of bacteria and other infectious microorganisms like your microbiome. So it's basically estimated that if you took a 10-day course of antibiotics, you would probably permanently destroy about 30% of the diversity of your gut flora or your microbiome. Now, luckily, this can be repaired over time, but if you don't go through that repair process, you're basically walking around with uh, a microbiome that's 30% less smart than it's supposed to be, or maybe just 30% less effective than it's supposed to be. So NSAIDs are non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or most of the painkillers you can get from your regular doctor or over the counter have all been proven to damage that mucosal membrane and potentially even cause ulcers themselves. And it's one of those vicious circles because chronic pain leads to chronic use of painkillers, which can lead to even more compromised health and damage, causing more inflammation and more pain. And now we have what we call the op opioid epidemic. So overuse of those drugs isn't helping people at all, and it's not helping you. So dysbiosis is an imbalance between all of those fun critters in your gut. And depending on who is winning, who's losing, you know, that may produce in your life chronic acne, chronic headaches. It may mess with your ability to regulate your weight, and it may even stop you from sleeping. So dysbiosis is really important. And obviously, uh, the rest of those factors are as well. So last on the list is malnutrition, and it's important to be aware that not only can a leaky gut cause malnutrition, you can actually end up with a leaky gut because of malnutrition. So remember that this is a tennis court sized membrane. It has to rebuild itself every few days, at least once a week. Uh, and if you're not getting enough of the very specific building blocks that repair and generate the, the health of that membrane, it's going to be smaller, weaker, and uh, more sensitive to breakdown. And those nutrients are things as simply as proteins like collagen, a uh, hard to pronounce one called N-acetylglucosamine, but a fundamental structure in the health of your gut. When it comes to your microbiome, obviously you're going to need some fermented foods to keep the bacteria uh, fed and diverse, and that's especially true after some antibiotics. So another crucial area that impacts most people's health is called your genetics and or your epigenetic health. So if you're new to the idea of epigenetics, please check out my other video on, on that subject and nutrigenomics. Uh, the link will be below this video. So when you're looking at your genetic adaptability, the best way to understand that would be by looking into your family history, your physical fitness, and your diet and lifestyle. The loads that are most destructive in the long term to your epigenetic health are things like chronic inflammation, toxins, stress, sugar, and again, malnutrition. So your family's health history tells you essentially how well your family's genetic potential is actually handling or responding to the modern world. I always recommend genetic testing, especially if you have anything serious to figure out. I have found it to be absolutely worth the expense in the long run in every case that I've worked with. So being physically fit is obviously better than being a couch potato, and fitness is all about limits and kind of exceeding them and playing between them. And all of your cells and genes just love a good challenge. It's kind of what they're designed for. So you could choose some high intensity interval training, or you could even just fast for a few days. And just doing those things, pushing your limits and your boundaries a bit, you'll enjoy better cellular health just for those reasons. So diet and lifestyle seem pretty obvious in the long term, but I'm trying to make a point because when it comes to damage to your genes or your epigenetic system, it's really all about the long game or about what you do over years. So obviously if you have any chronic health problems, it is time to get focused and serious about your lifestyle and diet. So the loads that are the most destructive to your epigenetic health are chronic inflammation, this tells the deepest part of your immune system that you are chronically wounded or have a chronic infection. This can actually age you more rapidly and overload your cells with basically tissue waste and other nauseous material. This situation can also nudge your cells closer to the cliff of severe illness and even cancer. So toxins, again, they can use up essential nutrients, cause free radical damage, and even bind to your genes directly. Chronic stress can also inform your genes and your epigenetic system that you are in constant danger. And this tells your genes to start trying anything new or random. 
potentially triggering your genes for diseases instead of for superpowers. So sugar, sugar is toxic. Sugar is actually as addictive as heroin. It elevates your insulin, it elevates your triglycerides, it alters your brain chemistry, and it has actually zero nutritional benefit. Look at it this way. Malignant cancer cells need 15 times the glucose to live compared to your other cells. So yeah, sugar is very, very bad for you, especially your genetics. When we think of malnutrition on a genetic level, it gets very, very specific because different genes require different specific nutrients. If you don't have enough of, you have too much of certain essential nutrients, things can actually get really, really quite imbalanced in terms of unique biochemical pathways. And for some people who have sluggish genes or are overactive genes, they already need more or less of certain nutrients just to be normal. So when it comes to this part of health, it can get a little bit fiddly and precise but it always pays off in the end. So this is where the rubber hits the road. Do you have an autoimmune disease? Or are you on the spectrum we call generalized autoimmunity where it hasn't really gotten that bad yet? Because if you have been diagnosed or you're concerned with a potential autoimmune diagnosis on the horizon, I would really encourage you to review this video and notice there's some very common sense themes. First, you need to reduce inflammation. You need to reduce stress. You need to reduce your exposure to toxins and other things that actually cause your body to become more inflamed or more malnourished. Uh, obviously, reducing your exposure to any anything in the environment that's going to trigger your immune system are a good idea. There's a lot of triggers in the modern diet, so you know, look into the autoimmune protocols and get as close to that kind of uh, lifestyle as you can. If you can increase your nutrient density, you're going to have a lot less problems with malnutrition. And this is an unexpected one, but I always encourage all of my patients with autoimmune disease to ensure you're getting enough really conscious human connection. So as I've mentioned, you know, right now, one in six people has an autoimmune disease. One in three people dying in the hospital is dying because of an auto autoimmune disease. Right now we have 120 diseases that we've said, yes, those are autoimmune diseases. But again, you look at the mechanisms of what's happening inside those conditions, and those mechanisms are the same as the top chronic illnesses that are not considered autoimmune. Things like heart disease, cancer, uh, even Alzheimer's, they all rely on very, very similar problems that you see in autoimmune disease. So I bring this up just to try and encourage everyone who's looking at getting your health back, that if you treat yourself uh, with respect to the biggest classes of illnesses and the fact that many chronic illnesses that used to be considered distinct 10 years ago are now considered autoimmune this year, what if in two, two years the diagnosis you have is then shuffled over to autoimmune? So my encouragement to everyone with any chronic illness is treat it as if it's an autoimmune condition, get rid of the inflammation, reduce your stress, up your nutrient density, and do everything you can to get rid of those triggers and you will get better. So now what? I would encourage you to go and check out my other videos on autoimmunity. There's one on the autoimmune spectrum. There's one on the autoimmune protocol. And there's one on kind of a, if you're new to autoimmune disease, start here. If you're looking for more precise and kind of personal mentoring and guidance, uh, click the link below this video for my 10 Weeks to Abundant Health course. That's a really, really good kind of flagship introduction to autoimmune disease, how your body works, what goes wrong, and what you can do about it. So thanks for watching the video. I hope the new format uh, makes it easier to follow and to keep all those ideas in your mind because I'm making these for you to help you help yourself. So thanks for watching and have a great day. And please subscribe and click that little bell thing because apparently that means you'll get notified if I make more videos, which I will. So have a great day.